this morning, Proverbs chapter 24. Just a moment uh, to thank you, uh, church, for your love and your kindness that you've shown to us uh, since we've been here. And uh, and while you're away, you really miss folks, and we've really missed you while we were down. And of course, we were gone a couple of weeks. I uh, preached a revival at another church two weeks ago, and then we were at Disney World uh, this past uh, week, and uh, we've missed you. And we appreciate uh, the gift from the church uh, to us, and we also appreciate some of the gifts that some of you as individuals have uh, given us uh, this past week. And uh, God has blessed Joy and I and the children by placing us here at Healing Springs uh, to be with you all. And so uh, from the bottom of our hearts, we love you and we thank you. And I don't believe a pastor anywhere is more blessed than I am than with the folks that, that we have here. I know there are churches with thousands of people uh, in them, but uh, you couldn't beat the quality anywhere as far as I'm concerned. So uh, we thank you again. We thank you for, for all that you do for us. And we love you and we appreciate you. And thank you for supporting us with all of our faults and failures and putting up with us uh, whenever we uh, speak incorrectly or when we do something that just didn't exactly the way it should be done, but we appreciate you tolerating us and putting up with us uh, anyway. Also appreciate those who uh, stepped in while we were away and teaching and preaching for us. Uh, Kent Kirkland uh, last Sunday, uh, Steve Jowers did for a couple of Wednesday nights, and then Eric Smith uh, two Sundays ago. We appreciate that. So thankful that we have men who are capable of standing in the pulpit and opening God's Word and expounding on the Scripture. So we thank you. And uh, I wish I could say that we rested while we were in Florida, but whoever said that you rest on vacation was mistaken because that doesn't happen, especially at Disney World. Uh, we visited Magic Kingdom, uh, Hollywood Studios, uh, Holy Land, and uh, SeaWorld um, as well. But before we go any further, I'd like for us to go ahead and bow in prayer for God's blessing on His Word. Father in Heaven, we are thankful uh, for this church. And, and Lord, we know that there's a universal church, uh, the Bride of Christ, but Lord, there's also the local church uh, that You ordained. And, and Father, we thank You for these people that we love uh, so much, uh, Your people, Lord. Father, we just ask you to continue to bless this church as you've done the last couple of years. And Lord, we truly believe that we're really just getting started here. That Lord, you have much still for us to do. And so Lord, we just ask your blessing as we open your word and read from it, as we preach from it. And Lord, might your Holy Spirit uh, just reign free here today. And Lord, just press upon our hearts now what you would have us uh, to glean from the Scriptures. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, today we're going to be concluding our series on falling back. I think this is the sixth message, falling back, backsliding. We've seen the characteristics of the backslider. We've seen the causes. We've seen some consequences. And now today we're going to see conquering Backsliding. And due to the deacon ordination service at 5 o'clock, uh, we'll try to be brief. It was very tempting to preach two sermons since I've been gone for two weeks, but we'll try to keep it uh, brief today so that we can get back. Or we could just preach right on until 5 o'clock and, and go ahead and then start with the next service. But uh, we'll see. As we continue with backsliding, in order to backslide, uh, to fall back, into, that means that there's temptation, some temptation is around if you're falling back. And it's not easy fighting temptation in this world that we live in. Things look so good, they sound good, they smell good, they taste good, and they feel good in this world that we live in. I've got a few pictures that I wanted to show from this past uh, week. of Jason, if you'll show a couple of those. Now, that's not one of them. That's not Disney World there. Uh, there we go. That is Snow White and the children there. And that was, of course, at Magic Kingdom. You can flip to the next one, please, sir. And, of 
course, that's the famous uh, castle. And uh, I was standing right there, I think, when uh, Carolina was trying to go into overtime against Missouri a couple weeks ago. All right, next picture. That's Lance. Lance didn't know I was going to put that one right there. I told Lance, I said, Pretend you're really enjoying this, uh, uh, what was it, Mickey Mouse uh, show right now. And he went like that, you know. So I took his picture. All right, next picture. All right, this is SeaWorld, and uh, how many of you have ever been to SeaWorld and saw, you know, the Shamu, you know, jumping in the water and so forth, and so leave that one up for just a couple of minutes. Well, uh, I want to kind of set the scene here. There's hundreds of people sitting around in this outdoor theater at SeaWorld, and they're waiting, of course, on the show to begin. And uh, it's hot, you're tired of walking. I think one day we walked 10 miles, I think somebody had that. So you walk a lot, it's hot, you're tired, and you're, at one point the children were just laying on the ground, they were so tired. And, and, and you want a good seat for this show. And uh, so you get there early. The show started at 5.30 and we got there around 4.30. Had to wait on the, the gates and so forth to get in. But we wanted to get some of the best seats. So uh, we're sitting there. Uh, waiting, and that's some folks that were in front of us. They were pretty close uh, to, to that particular part. And, but while you're sitting there, you know, uh, the people at these theme parks, they have everything figured out. They know that you got there early. They know it's hot. They know that you're thirsty. And so in comes these individuals. You see the boy standing right there with the hat on his head down at the bottom. Here he comes uh, with drinks. And so in comes these guys selling popcorn, cold drinks, uh, towels, ponchos, keychains, little plastic shampoos that blow bubbles, and just all sorts of tempting stuff for people who may be thirsty, hungry, maybe some that are sitting up close like we were, we're worried about getting wet, maybe. Or then you have the adults that have the children that want everything that they show up. And so they walk by holding up these towels and they say things like, if, if you can hear my voice, then you're going to need a towel. You're going to get wet. You know, they're trying to sell these products and the kids kids warm, and I even thought myself one time about buying an official SeaWorld towel. They kept coming around with them, but anyway, it's all tempting. It's tempting. The atmosphere, the growling stones, the dry mouth from the heat, the flashing lights, the sights, the sounds, it's easy to give in. It's temptation. And life is like that. There's so much temptation out there, and unfortunately, sometimes we give in to that temptation. How many of you sinned this past week. Raise your hand if you sinned this past week. Either in thought, word, or deed. Everybody here sinned this past week because you're human. I know that you did. This Bible says that you have. And there's a difference, however, between committing a sin and living a lifestyle of sin. The backslider, you see, has made sin his or her lifestyle. They have fallen. And they're no longer a lie. For Jesus Christ. They no longer daily seek the things of God, but they find pleasure in the things of this world. And something or someone along the way tripped them up and they fell. And they fell. Reminds me of something that happened to me back at uh, this past summer at the beach. For some regretful reason, I decided to chase Lance herself there on the beach, and I thought I was running pretty fast. And between the shore there, of course, you've got the sand that's near the shore with the water that gets pretty wet with the waves coming up. And then you've got that hot sand all from the shore that's real sandy, you know. And in between is where we were running. And, and as I began to try to sprint and go a little faster, um, I hit some softer dirt. I lost my balance, and I began to slide across that hard, rough, salty sand on my stomach. And if I had fallen on the soft sand, it would have been all right. Or if I had fallen in the water, I'd have been okay. But uh, it wouldn't have been so bad. But I ended up bleeding. Uh, my my elbows were bleeding. My my stomach was bleeding. My knees were bleeding. I took a pretty good fall uh, that day, and I was embarrassed too because there was a lady standing there, and she said. But anyway, I was playing through the boys, and, and I was slow getting up off the ground. And I still had a scar uh, from that. Well, in a similar way, one of the great battles in the Christian life is to fight to get back up on your spiritual feet once you have fallen. It's very difficult for people to do that. And let's look now at Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16. And the Word of God 
says, For a just man falleth seven times, and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. When we get away from the Lord, it's very difficult to break those old habits, those sins that have enslaved us and caused us to drift away from the Lord in the first place. But the scripture that we read just then says, A just man falls seven times and rises up again. So yes, what does that say? That means you will fall and I will fall. We will give in to temptation. There will be times that that anger overcomes you and you say or do something that you shouldn't. There will be times that that bitterness causes you to think that which you shouldn't, whether it's jealousy, alcoholism, adultery, pessimism, whatever it is, you will fall at some point in life. David, who the Bible says uh, about him, he was a man that was after God's own heart. He failed it. You think about Peter. He said, Lord, I, I'll follow you all the way to death. And what does he do when Jesus is arrested? He denies. He denies having known after Jesus is arrested. So Peter also failed. So you and I will fall. Any of you ever fallen physically before? Anybody here ever fallen before physically? All right, some of you have. Some falls hurt us physically, and some seem to do little or no damage. Well, in a similar way, spiritually, some falls seem small with little consequences and no visible effects, while others are hard falls and they lead to bruises and scars in life, even hurting those around us that we love the most. And the Bible says the just falls seven times. So you will fall multiple times in life. Now that does not excuse your sin. You should never wake up in the morning saying, well, I wonder what mischief I can get into today. So I'm not making light of sin this morning. I'm simply saying that you will sin, I will sin. We were born with that sinful nature given to us by Adam and Eve when they sinned in the Garden of Eden. But as a Christian, you and I have the Holy Spirit inside of us so that you and I may be able to fight, and not only fight, but overcome temptation. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 Verse 13 says this, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to me. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear. So you can't blame your sin. You can't blame that you fell down on God's spirit. So if you sin, if you fall, then you chose to. Amen? You did. I didn't hear a loud enough amens on that. If you have sinned, then you did it. Amen? Amen. Yeah. God didn't make you do it. You can't say the devil made you do it. No, you chose to sin. Whenever you choose to sin, you do do it. Now, when you do sin, we need to confess it. And we need to ask God to forgive us of those sins. The scripture that we read just then says that the just falls seven times. But what does he do after he falls? Anybody from the scripture from Proverbs 24? After he falls, what does he do? He rises again. He gets going again. So when you fall, confess that sin. You rise up. You get going again. Depending on how hard the fall was, it may take some time to get going as you were before. There may be some wounds that need to be cleaned up. There may be emotional distress from the fall. But the true child of God will rise up out of the backslidden life and will walk for Christ again. He will. She will. So there is victory in life if you want. And that victory is in Christ. It's in Christ. Amen. He has empowered us to conquer our sinful ways. And perhaps you're here today and you've cooled off spiritually. The Bible doesn't mean as much to you as it once did. Your prayer life is not what it used to be. Little priority is placed on coming to church these days. Well, how can we conquer backsliding? You may say, Jeffrey, I am backsliding. Or Jeffrey, my spouse is backsliding. Or Jeffrey, my teenager has gone astray. How does one get back on track? Well, here are five principles for conquering backsliding. Five principles for conquering backsliding. We're going to go through these uh, quickly. First, reject bad counsel or advice. Proverbs 19.27 says, Cease, my son. 
to hear the instruction that calls it to err from the words of knowledge. Often when a person gets in trouble, it is because we've listened to bad advice or we've been influenced by the world instead of the word. And this kind of corrupted lifestyle will leave you confused and spiritually cold. If your faithfulness is faltering today, if your dedication is drained today, if your peace is plummeting today, if your strength is strained this morning, I wonder, have you let the things of this world slip in ahead of the things of God? And that's very easy to do. We're told to cease or to leave alone the instruction from those that cause us to err from the Word of God. Secondly, conquering backsliding. Rebels should be avoided. Rebels should be avoided. During World War II, the enemy conducted experiments to find the most effective type of punishment to obtain information from prisoners. And they found that solitary confinement was the most effective. And after a few days of solitary confinement, most men would then tell all. They were desperate for fellowship with other people. And that is why you need fellowship. And that's why I need fellowship. For without it, we too become easy prey for temptation and abandonment of our values. And because fellowship is so important, and because fellowship is so influential on your life and my life, it is vital that we find the right kind of friends and to fellowship with, the right kind of friends to be around. So I wonder what kind of friends do you spend your time with? Are they friends with high morals who love and seek to serve the Lord? Are they? If you want to conquer a backslide in your life, then those friends who have a bad influence upon you need to be avoided. They must be avoided. Your relationship with them may need to be in Or you may need to spend a lot less time with these individuals. And that won't be easy. But it will be necessary if you cannot say no to their influence or their tempting suggestions. Proverbs 4, verses 14 and 15 says, Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid, pass not by it. Turn from it, and pass away. Thirdly, rule your passions. If you want to conquer backslide, then you must learn how to control yourself. You must guard your heart. You must exercise self-control over your eyes, thoughts, and your mouth. I wonder about you. Are you able to control your passions, your desires? Fourthly, rely on God's Word. Proverbs 5, 7 says, Hear me now, therefore, O you children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. God commands us to obey His Word. And you know He can do that. He can command you to obey His Word. Why? Because He created you. He owns you. He owns you. You belong to Him. I belong to Him. He owns us. He can tell us what to do and what not to do. And when we yield to His Lordship and His ownership, we take a step towards turning our lives around and conquering a backslidden heart. And when we submit to Him, all kinds of doors of blessings and opportunities are open to serve and glorify Him. So, so far, to conquer and backslide, we said that we need to reject bad counsel. We need to avoid those rebels out there. We need to rule our passions. We need to rely on God's Word. And fifthly, we need to resolve to get back up. And I'm coming back to the main text now where it says, For a just man fall of seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. This morning, if you, we were to be honest with ourselves, if we were to be honest with each other, if we were to be honest with the Lord at the end of the day, we all do what we want to do, don't we? We do. If I want to watch the ball game, then I'll watch the ball game. If I want to go to the coast, then I'll go to the coast. If I want to quit drinking, then I'll quit drinking. If I want to come to church, then I will come to church. So we do what we want to do at the end of the day. So if your life is in shambles this morning, if you want to get your life straight out, then you can. You can. If that's what you want to do. If you want to conquer backsliding, then you can. But you must resolve to get back up. You must make your mind up that you're going to do it. I will do it. I will. We must say. Uh,
What happens to you when you fall spiritually? Do you get back up? Or do you sit around making excuses to have a pity party about yourself? Have you fallen? Then get back up. Get back up. Setbacks from disappointment or depression? Get up! Are you discouraged? Get up! Are you doubting? Get up! Are you afraid? Get up! Instead of laying around, after falling, get up! Resolve to get up! Problems with pornography? Resolve to overcome it. Addicted to substances? Resolve to be clean. Bitterness in your heart? Resolve to let it go. Full of worry and anxiety? Resolve to rest in Jesus. Whatever it is, whoever it is that has stripped you and caused you to fall, resolve to get up. You must. The just fall seven times and rises again. How about you? Will you resolve today to rise again? Now as we prepare for the invitation, how do you need to respond to the word that you've heard today as far as with Christ that He may be honored? Do you need to come pray for strength to fight that temptation that's in your life? Some particular temptation that you have over and over and over and your flesh desires it. The devil reminds you of it daily and it's just dangling in your face all the time. Do you need to come pray and ask God to give you strength to fight that temptation, whatever it might be? Or perhaps you have fallen back recently. Do you need to come commit to following these steps saying, I will reject that bad advice. I will find better friends who love the Lord and are a good influence upon me. I will control my passions. I will rely on God's Word and I will get back up. Won't you do that today? We all struggle. Everybody in here from these pews all the way over to the back all the way around and all the way back to the front. We all struggle. We all are sinners. We all need God's forgiveness. Won't you seek it today for that little sin that keeps creeping into your life. Won't you resolve to get up because there's victory in Christ? Won't you come today? Would you bow in prayer with me, please? Father in heaven, we thank you for the few minutes we've had to share a small portion of your word this morning. Lord, everybody here struggles. Lord, everybody here is a sinner. So, Father, none of us are any better than anyone else when it comes to that. But, Lord, we thank You that You died on the cross. You paid the way for us to enter into heaven. So, Lord, we pray first and foremost, should there be one here that's never trusted Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, they've never received forgiveness of sins due to the work of the cross, and You taking our penalty as a substitute upon Yourself, so that we might inherit eternal life. If someone has never come saying, I need to be saved, Lord, help them to come this morning. Father, perhaps there's a Christian here. Lord, they know they're saved. They know they're on the way to heaven. But Lord, there's a sin in their life that keeps creeping in every day they're reminded of. It. And Lord, sometimes they give in to that temptation. Lord, I pray that that Christian may come this morning and pray for strength to fight. Lord, we know that there's a battle between the flesh and the spirit every day. But Lord, you've given us a spirit so that we might fight and overcome temptation. Lord, help us to yield to you daily. Lord, perhaps as a Christian here who has been away from your word, their prayer life hasn't been what it once was. And Lord, they are hit and miss when it comes to attending church and being with their people. Lord, help that one to come and say, I need Christ in my life. I need Christ to Lead the way I need to follow Christ more closely. Lord, just have your will and way during this invitation, Father. Bless, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand at this.